All right guys, welcome back to another video here on the George Benson Football Channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the new Lionel Messi, who doesn't play for Barcelona. But before we get into seeing about him, we're going to talk about the new Galacticos in world football. And they're not from Real Madrid. The Galacticos now, we're looking at Barcelona. When I think of the term Galactico, what do I think of? Eden Hazard is the new Real Madrid Galactico. Okay, whatever, boring. I'm thinking Zidane, Figo, Raul, Ronaldo, Blimin, what's his face, David Beckham. That's what I'm thinking of. Barcelona have said, you know what? That may have been a good attack, but we want to do something different. We are sick and tired of moments like this. <laughs> moments like this again. Barcelona are pretty much just trying to buy the Champions League trophy next season. Is there any point in anyone else competing, really? Lionel Messi, arguably the greatest player who's ever lived. Luis Suarez, a menace. Dennis the menace, some would say. Incredible striker. Antoine Griezmann signed from Atletico Madrid for a fee that Atletico are coming out and saying isn't what it should have been. So I'm sure we're going to read into that one a lot more. They want to re-sign Neymar, who's gone AWOL at PSG. He's not turning up for training sessions. PSG are tweeting, being like, does anyone know where Neymar is? Even Neymar doesn't really know where he is, to be honest. He's contracted to PSG, but he's throwing his toys out of the pram, trying to force a move back to the club that he should never have left in the first place. Things we do for money. But when I look at that, I look at four of the best players in the world playing in the same team. And then if one of them gets injured, or lo and behold, two of them get injured, what do we do now? Are oh, we bring on Dembele, who is 140 odd million pounds worth of a player, and Coutinho. I mean, it could not be any more scary, really, could it, for any other team competing in the Champions League next season. Even Real Madrid, they've bought Eden Hazard, they've bought Jovic, they've spent a load of money this summer, and it looks as though they're gonna spend more. Real Madrid and Barcelona are going head to head in terms of who can buy the Champions League the quickest. The thing is, when you actually spend that much money to build that much of an attacking force, which on paper would pretty much make half of the teams come up with excuses as to why they can't actually play the match, because they're gonna get absolutely hammered on paper, that is what it would suggest. Although if we look back to when Real Madrid had all of those players, yes, they had a Champions League win back in the early 2000s. But then if I remember correctly, there was also three seasons around the time when they had those sort of players well, they didn't even win a trophy. So it's not always a guarantee that if you buy all of these incredibly talented attackers, that it's actually gonna work as a team. Although when it comes to this Barcelona case, we're really only looking at Griezmann as an addition to a team that already played together in the past. The MSN, the Messi, Suarez, Neymar, is pretty much as though Neymar's gone to Paris for a long holiday and then he's come back and he will fit straight back in to a regime that he already knows so well. I've said it already, he went for the money. It's so blatantly obvious. Neymar, Paris is lovely, but a video that I saw on social media this morning is of the new Lionel Messi, and he doesn't play for Barcelona, he plays for Real Madrid. And he goes by the name of Takifusa Kubo, and he's 18 years old, he's Japanese, he was released by the Barcelona Academy about five years ago, and now he's in the Real Madrid first team training sessions. He's not gonna be playing for the Real Madrid's first team next season. It looks as though he's gonna be in the equivalent of their B team playing next season for them. But he's in the first team training right now and people are comparing him to Lionel Messi. They're saying he's the Japanese Messi. So yet again, another bright star for the future for Real Madrid. If he plays in Eden Hazard's position, maybe they could just send him back. So yes, Barcelona look as though they're gonna be re-signing Neymar as well as the addition of Griezmann, but it isn't the only man they've bought in this summer. Frankie de Jong, who had a breakthrough season last year for Ajax, he was one of the best players in Europe. He's been signed also. It looks as though he can't stop smiling about his move to Barcelona. I mean, if it's your boyhood club, I totally get it. The guy's a great guy, great player, and he's gonna have a bright future at Barcelona as well. Real Madrid, in order to keep up with this ridiculous expenditure of the two top clubs in Spain, Paul Pogba or Christian Eriksen look to be the first choice midfielders that Real Madrid want to bring in in order to strengthen up their midfield as well. Pogba, Manchester United value him at 170 million, which is absolutely, completely, and utterly ludicrous. But obviously the money has not just been spent by those two big sides in Spain this summer. Felix has gone to Atletico Madrid for around the same amount of money as Atletico sold Griezmann for. So in terms of them spending the money, they've also spent 58 million pounds on Alvaro Morata. So it's looking to me as though the three top teams in Spain will remain the three top teams in Spain next season. And if one of those doesn't win the Champions League next year, it's gonna take a monumental effort once again from another team. Hopefully Frank Lampard's Chelsea, but most likely 
City or Liverpool, in my opinion, or Juventus, who have just pretty much announced the signing of Matthias de Ligt from Ajax. I'm actually going to Amsterdam tomorrow, and I'm looking for Ajax fans. If any of you are an Ajax fan, leave me a comment in the comments down below, or tweet me. My Twitter is Mr. George Benson. I'm looking to meet up with Ajax fans and make a video just discussing the future for Ajax, what it meant last season getting to the semi-final of the Champions League. Obviously, like we've already said, they lost Frankie de Jong to Barcelona. De Ligt hasn't gone on their pre-season tour. They're going to Austria to play a game against Watford. I actually thought the game was going to be played in Amsterdam, to be honest. I started looking for tickets, got to the checkout, realised that I was buying a ticket for a game that's happening in Austria, so I didn't end up paying for that. So Ajax are playing a friendly against Watford. De Ligt hasn't travelled, and it's looking very, very much almost confirmed. Maybe by the time this video goes live, it will be confirmed. Matthias De Ligt has signed for Juve for 67 and a half million pounds. We're talking about 80 million for Harry Maguire. I wonder who's got the best deal there. West Ham look as though they're gonna sign Sebastian Haller from Frankfurt. The talk is it's a 45 million pound transfer. We mentioned Gonzalo Higuain potentially going to West Ham in a couple of videos ago. It doesn't look as though that's gonna happen now if they're spending 45 million on the Frankfurt striker. As for Frankfurt, Europa League semi-finalist last year, they lost Jovic, and now they're gonna be losing Sebastian Haller also. 45 million is a lot of money, but West Ham mean business. Taking it back to Real Madrid, it also looks, according to the papers, as though Spurs may well be keen on bringing back Gareth Bale. In terms of the contract and the wages that Gareth Bale demands, it's astronomical. And I feel as though now, with all of the signings that are being made by Real Madrid, Eden Hazard's come in, we've got the new Lionel Messi, the Japanese Messi. The future for Real Madrid and Gareth Bale doesn't look like it's something that's in unison. So a move back to Spurs would probably be one of Bale's top choices. It's just whether or not he's willing to accept a pay cut, which would probably still see him get a couple of hundred grand a week. It looks as though David De Gea may have made a bit of a U-turn and instead of leaving Manchester United again for the 157th time, he may well be about to sign a new deal at United for £375,000 a week. Ludicrous, isn't it? Surely. £375 grand a week, David De Gea, to sign a new deal at Manchester United. I'm pretty sure in about three weeks' time we'll be talking about him leaving again. If we flip back to the start of this video where we're talking about Barcelona having Suarez, Messi, Neymar and Griezmann as their first choice front four, where does that leave Felipe Coutinho? Supposedly, Coutinho is open for a move back to Liverpool. Liverpool fans, would you want Coutinho back? Would he get into your starting eleven, considering how prolific the front three have been for you over the past couple of seasons? Since you lost Coutinho, everything that looked as though it was going to go downhill has just gone flying uphill for Liverpool. So bringing Coutinho back, is it something that you would be interested in? What would you say the price that you would pay would be? Because it definitely looks as though Barcelona are going to need to sell one of Dembele or Coutinho in order to not only fund the move for Neymar, but to also keep all of those Galacticos happy at the front. Coutinho back to Liverpool is a scary prospect for the Premier League, and obviously the Champions League winners would probably welcome the move, I think, the majority. But let me know your thoughts if you're a Liverpool fan. Inter Milan look as though they are ready to step up their move for Romelu Lukaku. A £60 million plus bid is ready to be papered. We've spoken about Lukaku many times. It looks as though Inter Milan are finally ready to step up the pace. What does that mean for Icardi? Could he move the other way? Where could Icardi go? Surely he can't go to Real Madrid or Barcelona. That we can definitely agree on. So that brings an end to this little transfer update video. I like doing these videos where I just sit down and talk about potential transfers that could be happening. It's pretty crazy, the world of football right now, in terms of the money being spent. It's almost a nightmare when a top team doesn't win a trophy like the Premier League, the Champions League or La Liga because it just means they're going to spend more money and in the long run, make it even harder for other teams to compete. So Barcelona are spending. They're sick and tired of Champions League exits. It looks to me as though they could have the strongest and scariest front four in football next season. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. El Clasico is going to be bigger and better than ever before, and we still don't have Cristiano Ronaldo in that conversation. Isn't that mental? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Who's going to win La Liga next season? Who's going to go further in the Champions League? Barcelona or Real Madrid? I think it all depends on who that midfielder is that Real Madrid bring in. I'm expecting at least one more big signing from them. Barcelona, will Neymar go back? It is still to be seen, but I think PSG are pretty sick and tired of the Brazilian just being a bit of a nutcase. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. I've got a very cool video going out tomorrow, if it didn't go out yesterday, where Tilda and I are going to be rating all 20 of the Premier League kits. 
for the upcoming season. That should be fun. I will see you all later. Bye-bye.